In this video, we're going to talk about why you need to plan on carrying technical debt or tech debt as the founder of a no code app. Now, make sure you stick around until the end, because in this video, we're going to be going through a product management workspace, a really straightforward one that I've put together and want to walk you through so that you can use the same to manage your app and your tech debt correctly. Hey, it's Kristen over at Coaching No Code Apps. We help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps so they can launch their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding. And if you are following the same path, then subscribe to our channel. We publish new videos every single week to help you do just that. All right, so the first thing we need to do is talk about what tech debt is in the first place. I was having a conversation the other day with one of our private clients, and he was asking how you go about really just managing and growing your app after you launch, especially as a solo founder or a small team where resources are generally pretty thin. And his experience with project management, and this might be the same with you as well, is basically that, you know, when you when you move forward with a new project and you launch that project or initiative, no matter what it's related to, the, the new project goes live. And then right afterwards, most of the time is spent iterating or fixing or changing things within that project or initiative. And it can easily end up being the case that there's no time left to add on new parts of the project or move forward with next steps in the roadmap. And so that project or that initiative kind of becomes stagnant and never actually reaches its full potential. So you might have had experience like this in the past as well just with projects in general. And so when I was having a conversation with this client, he was kind of really just wanting to know how to make sure his app didn't end up becoming the same sort of thing. And you don't want that. You don't want to launch your app and then have to spend so much time fixing and changing the things you've already built that you have no time left to move forward with all the next features and all the next things that are going to add even more value into your app. So how do you fix that? The solution is tech debt. You are going to carry technical debt as the founder of your app. And tech debt is kind of like any type of debt. There is good debt and there's bad debt. You can leverage debt to help you uh, move forward or accomplish more or see a greater return in another area. So tech debt is something that you are going to want to intentionally plan on leveraging after you launch your app. The project management workspace that we're gonna go through in a minute is going to help you visualize how to, really just how to choose which debt to carry, if you will. But essentially the way you wanna look at this is, you know, when you launch your app, there are going to be lots of things you need to fix. You are constantly going to be pulled in the direction of fixing or changing or iterating the existing features. And so you're going to find, again, especially if you're a solo founder or a small team, that you very rarely have time to actually move forward with other new value add features. And so tech debt is essentially when you make the intentional decision to leave some of those maybe issues or underperforming areas of your app in place so that you can save the time you would otherwise spend fixing those things and instead focus that time on those new additional value add features, knowing that the loss you are experiencing from leaving this one thing in place is going to is not going to be as detrimental compared to the gain you will experience if you move forward with this new additional value add feature. So you are essentially comparing the loss you could experience by leaving this one component in place 
versus the gain you will experience by adding this new component on. Now, something to keep in mind is you can't carry your debt forever. And so you want to make sure you pay that debt back before it balloons too big, right? So you intentionally carry the debt for a certain period of time until it is time to pay back that debt. When it's when it when it gets to the point where that loss is going to now be too big for you to continue carrying it. Let's go through this visually. I am over on a very simple Notion page that I've put together. And this is really just our tech debt demo. This is something you can think of as a project management workspace. You can create something like this yourself. You may already have something like this that you can tweak to be similar, uh, but know that this is a very simplistic approach just for the purposes of understanding how to use tech debt. So at the top here, we have our issues, feedback, and roadmap features or components. So this is essentially, let's say we've launched an app and we're now getting user feedback. We are getting feedback about bugs within the app that we haven't caught already. We're getting feedback about features that need improvement, either from users themselves or just from data and analytics. And we are getting feature requests, or maybe we have our own features in our roadmap that we already know we want to add. So these are all the to do's within our app. And then down here, we have a really simple priority board. So essentially what we're going to do is take the bugs, the needs improvement areas, the feature requests, and we are going to delegate them into different columns in our priority board. So we have low priority, medium priority, high priority, and a simple fix now. The key to really leveraging tech debt is to know how to prioritize different features or bugs, really just how to prioritize your time. That's the big thing here because as a solo founder or small team, your time is really the most valuable thing. So you have to make sure you are putting it toward the most uh, or the highest value return items in, in a project space like this. So what we're going to do is pretend like this is our working living board where we're taking these bugs, uh, we're taking these bugs, the areas that, that need improvement and the user requests, and we're now delegating them so we can decide which ones we're going to move forward on and which ones we are going to hold on to as technical debt because by putting our time somewhere else, we can get a greater return. Okay, so let's just go through them right now. So in this example, we have a job board application. It's really not that relevant to the example, but you'll see some references in here. Uh, so bear that in mind. So we have bugs. Now, bugs are straight issues, right? It, there is something going wrong in the app that really just needs to be fixed. It's not an iteration, it's just a bug. So we have to decide which ones are fix nows. In other words, it doesn't really matter what the return is. This just has to be fixed regardless. And then on, on the other side, which are low, medium, and high priorities. In other words, how are we going to space them out or prioritize them over time as we go? So let's say our bug number one is applicant search results are not fully responsive. So this is not a functional bug. This is simply an aesthetic bug. Now, not being fully responsive can mean having, you know, three cards and two showing on top and one showing on the bottom when the screen becomes smaller, right? So not, not uh, the most visually perfect layout, but definitely still usable. So I'm gonna say that this is a low priority. Now, this is something you can change later, but we're going to be comparing all of these. For right now, this is a low priority. Now, we have another one that says page stays blank when there aren't results, needs a placeholder. So let's say someone is on a search page. They are searching for a list of jobs available that they can apply to, but when there are no jobs available that match their search query, nothing shows. And so really 
what's happening in the background is there just aren't any jobs that match the query. But on the front side for the user, it might look like things are broken. So this could cause them to probably click around in the app or maybe adjust their search query. So it's not keeping anyone from using the app. It's just a little bit of a uh, well, it's just a little bit of a bug that can cause some confusion. Now, I'm going to say this is medium priority. Now, we have a hypothetical scenario here going, but uh, I'm putting this here because in our hypothetical scenario, we haven't seen a loss in users because of this. There's just a little bit of clicking around, so it's not as smooth as it really should be. Okay, now another bug is that data is not saved from a job type input. Now, this is a straight bug and this has to be working in the app. So I'm just gonna pull this over to fix now. We don't need to prioritize it. We really just need to go ahead and do it now. And then we have a CTA on the demo page not working. So our call to action button on the demo page is not working. Again, this is a fix now type of thing we need the CTA to work so that users can convert or that so that prospective users can convert into actual users. And then we have a dashboard page showing up as blank when a user is logged out. And really a user just needs to be redirected to the login. So let's say a user was on their dashboard, but their login has timed out and now they're logged out. And instead of being redirected to the login page, they're just seeing a blank screen. So this is kind of like uh, this one here where the page stays blank and there needs to be a placeholder. Really, we just need to redirect, uh, but it's not something that's causing you know, a loss of users or anything like that, just a little bit of a hiccup. So I'm gonna put it under medium priority. Now we're gonna go over to the needs improvement column. So these are things that we really just want to optimize. Now. This is where we're going to start considering technical debt more. We are going to look at optimizations or things that need improvement as giving us a certain level of return. So a this first one here says we have a suboptimal load time on an index page repeating group. So the performance is just a little bit slow. It needs improvement. When you're using something like this in real life, you want to be making decisions using data as much as you possibly can. So when we say that something has a suboptimal loading time and we are figuring out how to prioritize that, should we carry that as debt or should we pay that back right now? Well, we really wanna see how much that that debt would affect us if we didn't pay it back. So for example, how many users are we losing because of this suboptimal loading time? Or how many support tickets or you know, um, complaints are we getting from users saying, hey, this is not working? Or, or maybe just confusion, right? Um, what, what is the, what's the actual result of this? And can you measure it? So the more you can measure these things, the better decisions you're going to be able to make. Now, again, the, the example that we're going through is just simplified, but keep in mind, the more data you have, the better decisions you can make about which debt to carry and what to pay back now. In this simplified example, we're just looking at a suboptimal load time. Now, we could go in and troubleshoot this and look at how to rebuild this or change it so that it loads a little bit faster. But in our hypothetical situation, we're not really seeing any drop off or churn in users because of this. And so instead of going in and changing this whole thing, what I'm going to do is put this as low priority and instead I'm just gonna put a loading cog up on the screen so that while it's loading, people understand that it is in fact loading. And instead I'm going to take that time that I would have spent troubleshooting and rebuilding, and I'm going to allow myself to focus it elsewhere on something that's going to give me a higher return. Okay, so let's keep going through. Another area that needs improvement is that a product demo video that we have on one of our landing pages where we've shown the app to prospective users, the design is outdated, right? We've deployed the app since we created that video, we updated some of the design, and now it's outdated in that video. Now, this is something that would drive a lot of people crazy. They would have to have this perfect, but 
I know that just because the design is a little bit different, it's not going to change anything relating to user conversion, right? Um, it, it's not big enough. And while it's going to bug me like crazy because I want it to be perfect, I know that my time is better spent elsewhere, gaining a higher return versus re-recording a demo video just because some small design tweaks. So I'm gonna put this as low priority as well. Now, our last one in this column is that we have a drop off during our onboarding in step number two of 30%. So we have a, let's say a three step onboarding and we are tracking where prospective users drop off during that onboarding process so that we can see where we should improve the onboarding. And right now, most users are moving through step one, but 30% are dropping off at step two and never getting to step three, meaning they were starting to come onto the app, but now they're not moving forward. Now, this is pretty big. 30% of prospective users are dropping off. So I'm putting this as high priority because if you compare this to anything we have in medium priority or low priority, fixing or improving or changing this is going to give us a vastly higher return on our time than focusing on any of these things. So this is my first high priority in this project management workspace. So now we have a couple more in the future features or user requests column. You'll see on, on the board that we have those three columns, bugs, needs improvement, and future features or user requests and feedback. It's important to separate those out because bugs are pure functionality. And so those are either, you know, you fix them right now or, or you don't because they're not that big of a deal. Needs improvement are the things you're going to want to generally analyze, right? Like those onboarding steps. Well, we have data from our onboarding that helps us analyze how we can improve. Right. So you have to actually have things to measure to see what really needs improvement versus a bug, which is just something that needs to be fixed. And then in our other column, we have future features or user requests and feedback. Now, this lets you separate out what users are actually telling you from their own mouths. Right. So needs improvement is different. This is where you're analyzing trends. User requests are where people are actually telling you, hey, I need this because it's going to add value to my own work process. Okay, so it's important to separate those out to help you determine where to put your time. So jumping back into those future features, user requests, we have two in here. We have companies need to be able to hide their info. And 70% of users have requested this. And then we have direct video call integration versus going off the app. Now, this is where we can really take a, a strategic approach to leveraging debt in order to put our time elsewhere and get a higher return. Now, if I think about uh, this, this small feature or small change where companies need to be able to hide their information, maybe from people who haven't yet applied or who haven't gotten to a certain point in the application process, right? Companies don't want them reaching out off the app. So they want to be able to hide their info, but they want their info on there for later stages in the process, right? So a bunch of users have requested this. So I know that this is going to be something that adds a lot of value to the app. And this might actually be something that would allow me to uh, justify you know, the pricing better during sales, that we have these niche features or, you know, we've taken this feedback and really molded it to our users' needs. I mean, you can apply this in lots of different ways, but knowing how many users have requested this, I'm going to say that this is, you know, I would probably put this between medium and high priority. I'll put it at the top of medium priority. Right, so if we look at these as maybe also the chronological order in which we're going to work through them, I'm going to put that one at the top. The reason why I say that is because the this drop off rate is a higher priority to me. I'm going to invest my time here before I invest my time here because I need to make sure I'm I'm successfully bringing users on board the app 
before I then focus on successfully retaining those users and continuously adding value, right? We obviously have a baseline of value add and retention, but when we're looking at improvements now, that's how I'm going to consider it. And then we're going to go to our direct call integration versus going off the app. So this is like when companies uh, want to have interviews with their applicants for their jobs, instead of sharing information and sharing links and you know getting on a Zoom call or something like that off the app, companies are able to just start a video call with their applicants right on the app. It cuts down on the steps in their process and their communication. It lets them keep all the information on the app. Now, this is something that I'm planning on building as a premium feature, right? So if I have pricing tiers of you know, free, pro, and premium, this is something that I'm going to add to my premium because I know it's a, a big value add for these companies who are wanting to save time. And so I'm going to put that in high priority. Okay, so I'm going to carry my low priorities as technical debt. I'm going to carry my medium priorities at least for a certain amount of time as technical debt, knowing that the consequences of carrying that are going to be lower than the benefits of being able to focus my time on these high priority items. So I will carry that debt intentionally in order to leverage my time and focus it here so I can add more value. Now, as I go through and start, actually, let me, I'll just drag them over here for demo purposes. As I go through and start knocking these off, well, then I'm going to start rearranging things, right? I'm going to bring this over into high priority and, and so on, right? So you're constantly going to be analyzing that technical debt. What do you want to keep carrying and what do you want to pay back? All that being said, it's not as simple as just dragging things over on a project board as you tick them off, okay? Because debt is something that can, you know, at, at one point it can be beneficial to leverage and at a later point, you may really need to pay it back. So for example, let's jump over to the project board one more time here. Let's say right now I have uh, a couple hundred users on board my app and these medium priority um, improvements that I'm planning on making, I'm not really seeing any negative effect of leaving them in place. And therefore, I'm, I'm deciding to carry those as debt so I can continue to focus my time on more high value areas. But let's say a few months from now, I start running paid ads and my user base grows to a thousand users. And at that point, I'm paying to acquire users and I have a larger user base. And because of that larger user base, I'm now starting to see more feedback telling me that there's irritation or some drop off even if I'm analyzing the trends because of this debt that I'm carrying. Okay, so now not only am I paying for these users, but I'm also losing some of these users that I have paid for because of this debt that I've been carrying. So now because my user volume is larger and now I'm starting to see some of the effects of this, I'm going to prioritize this as debt that I need to pay back now because now it really is having a larger detrimental effect and the return that I might be getting from some of these higher priority areas, that return might not outweigh the consequences of the debt I'm carrying any longer simply because of changes with my app or my user base or my pricing structure or my acquisition strategies. Okay, so you constantly have to be analyzing your debt and making sure that you're carrying the right debt and you're paying that debt back at the right time. And when you do this, you're going to be able to really protect your time. And, you know, of course, after you have started growing your app, you may start growing your team if that's the direction you want to go in. But if you want to have a micro product and a micro team and, you know, maybe it's just you or maybe it's just you and another partner and you want to stay that way, well, you really need to get good at 
managing your technical debt and being able to prioritize these things. So when you move forward in this way and with this mindset, you're going to be able to get the biggest returns on your time as possible. And this is really important because especially if you haven't launched your app yet, what you're going to find is as soon as you launch your app, you're going to start getting feedback and you are going to want to implement every single piece of feedback that you get. You, you're just going to want to, right? Because if people are telling you they want this over here, they want this change, you're going to want to give it to them because they're your users and they're on board your app now. But if you do that, you're going to be pulled in so many different directions that you're never going to move forward with actually growing your app. And so leveraging this tech debt is critical, especially when it's just you or you have a small team. It is absolutely critical. So make sure you move forward with this mindset. Now, equally as critical is how you get started with your app. So we're looking at technical debt as something that you can use after you launch. But what if you haven't even started building yet? Or what if you're in those early development stages working up to your launch and you're a solo founder or you're a small team? Well, you have to look at your app overall through this type of lens right from the start, really. So when you are scoping your app, for example, you want to be looking at which features are going to give you the highest return during your first launch. So you have an idea for your entire product that you're going to be um, you know, building eventually. But the first thing you have to do is get initial users on board to validate the product. So you might have validated your idea, but until you bring users on board your product and until they start paying you, you don't really have full validation. So you have to prioritize which features are actually critical to getting you that validation and to getting you to those paying, those first paying users so that you can then grow beyond that and start managing your technical debt, right? So you have to use this type of mindset all throughout your development. And if you want to start developing that mindset now, especially through scoping and through prioritizing earlier stages of your app's actual development, then head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop. So we have a workshop that is going to guide you through how to strategically uh, make sure you're building the right features that are actually going to give you uh, the, the biggest immediate return after launch to make sure that you are also using the right tools and really just leveraging no code tools correctly in combination with strategies like this. So you can actually launch an app that can become an actual business or scale your existing business. So you can head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop to join us there. And listen, if this video was valuable or helpful to you, if you could give it a like down below, we'd really appreciate it. It helps us help even more people build and launch their apps. So give the video a like. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.